Well, turning back to President Trump's uh, powerful address today at the United Nations General Assembly, my next guest says it was essential for the president to put the world on notice about the threats of North Korea and Iran and, and U.S. foreign policy. Joining me now, former National Security Advisor to Vice President Dick Cheney, Senior Counselor to Foundation for Defense of Democracies, John Hanna. John, good to have you with us. Thanks, Lou. Uh, your assessment of this speech uh, and I, what I think is a remarkably uh, uh, positive reaction from a General Assembly that doesn't usually even take note of what an American president says in any case. Yeah, I, I think this was vintage Trump. This was a president who was explaining precisely what America first looks like at a at a global level. level. It is a uh, strong, independent, sovereign nation states working together to defeat common threats like North Korea and Iran and to advance common interests in prosperity, peace, and security. That's the only way you get to a more stable global order, not by surrendering or submerging your sovereignty in some kind of one world globalized bureaucracy that's dominated by a bunch of corrupt, failed dictatorships. I and I you, think that the I, president delivered that message in a very blunt and powerful way. And my guess is that the likes of Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher would be absolutely beaming if they heard that speech today. You know, John, I honestly thought this was better than any speech I've ever heard by a president at the General Assembly. Uh, it was stronger. It was broader. It was clear and directed, as Ed Rollins says, the clarity was uh, remarkable. Uh, but the force with which he delivered it uh, and the assurance with which he delivered that speech, uh, it, it's obvious that the General Assembly, no friend of uh, the United States and most of those seats in the General Assembly, as you know, uh, they had to take note. Uh, and I think this president uh, is standing tall right now on the world stage. Yeah, the thing that that those countries in that in that audience today, what they need to hear is where the United States stands. What is the United States position on the major threats to global mm -hmm. peace and security today? And coming out of that hall, they have absolutely no uh, lack of clarity. Uh, on exactly where this president stands on the primary challenges that threaten uh, the United States and the rest of the world. To follow on your point, John, I, I would just like everyone to think about, it, if you would, for just a moment, uh, how much uh, the national, the vast uh, uh, left-wing national media chewed around uh, in their op-ed pages and uh, in their foreign uh, policy reporting about what is the Obama doctrine. And that discussion was going on to the very last day uh, he served uh, 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 in Washington. This president, eight months into the job, has defined the doctrine of his foreign policy. The Trump doctrine is clear, it is crisp, it is certain, and there is no ambiguity or should be no ambiguity in the minds of anyone in either the General Assembly or Beijing or Moscow uh, or Tehran. Yeah, I think that's right. On these two critical questions of North Korea and Iran, I really do think the president put everybody on notice that we are done kicking this can down the road, yeah. that we are going to deal with this problem one way or the other. We'd much prefer to do it with the rest of the world stepping up and taking responsibility with us. Mm -hmm. But if they won't, this president is going to deal with this problem alone if necessary. But it's going to get done because this is in the vital interest of America and its allies. And, and uh, John, I think you may want to argue with me about a bit of about what I'm about to say. But the two previous presidents, in point of fact, have left, uh, three previous presidents, have left uh, this president no choice but to have to confront either uh, individually as the uh, leader of the United States or uh, to the degree that our allies will stand up, uh, a, a North Korea that is nearing ballistic missile uh, capability for delivery of an advanced nuclear weapon. Uh, and, and shame on them. It was a failure of leadership on the part of those three presidents. And it is now up to this president uh, and to the degree that it is possible 
the, the leaders of those states represented uh, in the General Assembly and very importantly in the, uh, permanent, uh, the permanent members of the Security Council. Do you agree? I really wish I could disagree with you, Lou, but I can't. The fact is I can't. This is a history, a litany of failure by one administration after yeah. another, both Republican and Democratic. Unfortunately, this president has been left with very few options. He is either going to I think you just agreed with me, John, because I said it is uh, a question uh, uh, of uh, the failure of three presidents, uh, two of them Democratic and one Republican. And one who deal. I served with for eight I know, years, Lou. I know. I know. That's and why unfortunately, I, I've, got to, I've got to agree with you, because yeah. you're absolutely 100 percent right that none of them st stepped up to the plate and did what was necessary. John Hanna, good to have you here, as always. We always appreciate your insight.